Hi guys, it's ASBYT and a couple of days ago Apple had their spring loaded event where they announced their new iMacs, AirTags and their brand new 12.9 inch iPad Pros but no mention of their hotly anticipated 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So let's do that today. Let's go over what we know already and what we're possibly due to expect from these new machines, including design, specs, features, and launch dates. And thanks to Setup for sponsoring today's video. So firstly, if you saw the Apple event, you'll know that straight away it gave us some potential clues as to some of the features that we also believe are gonna drop on the new MacBook Pros, whose code names are apparently J314 and J316 hence why we believe these are the two new sizes. Now, the new iPad Pros announced are launching with Apple's new M1 chip, as seen in the recently refreshed MacBook Air and Pro 13-inch models that I reviewed on the channel, and a brand new Liquid Retina XDR display. This display uses mini LED backlighting, and you can get up to around 1,600 nits of peak brightness, and has a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. Now, this information is important because Trendforce, a Taiwanese research firm, have reported that Apple plans to launch their new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros with these mini LED displays in the latter half of 2021. The 2021 MacBook Pros will also jump to using the new M1 chip as expected from the previous Intel variety. So straight away you're going to be expecting better performance and also a much improved display from the, in this case example, my late 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro that I currently use for a lot of my work. This has an Intel Core i9 and a peak brightness of just 500 nits for reference. There's also some potential good news for the creatives amongst you because it seems that Apple, like they did with their recent keyboard update, are listening to consumers and putting that into practice with future products. As it seems they're gonna make a U-turn from a connectivity point of view by according to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, reintroducing an SD card slot and HDMI port, which I think would be a really good thing. Not a huge fan of Dongle City. Kuo also states that we could also see the return of a form of MagSafe charger and the discontinuation of the OLED touch bar with more physical keys, all wrapped up in a sharper physical design, more in keeping with the iPhone 12 series. A lot of this is actually backed up by a leak reported on by Mac Rumors of the schematics showcasing the logic board of the next gen MacBook Pro and images of the ports, HDMI and Thunderbolt USB C ports, and an SD card slot on the right, and two additional Thunderbolt ports and a MagSafe charging slot on the left. Now the latest 2020 Air and Pro 13 inch MacBooks uh, were the first from Apple to support the latest Wi-Fi 6 thanks to the inclusion of the M1 chip. So I'll probably eat my own face if the new 2021 MacBook Pros don't come with Wi-Fi 6. I mean if they don't I probably won't eat my face. Uh <laughs> Hopefully we'll also see an upgraded webcam with the new 16 inch design as the 720p one on the 2020 models for this new stay at home video conferencing life that many of us will continue to practice going forwards is less than ideal. I'm super excited for these brand new 2021 machines, especially the 16 inch model, because I loved the Air and Pro 13 inch that I reviewed at the back end of last year, but that larger, improved display on the new 16 inch model for video editing for example is just going to be lush did i just say the word lush for a macbook if you are currently a mac user or you're potentially looking to get your hands on the new 2021 macbook pros then today's video sponsor setup might be of use for you the great standalone piece of software for mac and iphone users to really enhance your productivity this individual app gives you immediate access to a whole new universe of over 200 others these apps range in categories all laid out in a really clean and easy to view format you have a home section with recommended apps favorites collections where you have apps of a similar ilk all grouped together to really help you solve the most common problems all at once and all the apps available with headings below to help you locate what you want if you're too lazy for that you also have a search box which helps you locate individual apps that may be of use for what you want to do like typing in recovering files etc so you can locate the right tool straight away and download with one click from VPNs to cleaning up disk space, battery optimizations, organizing your finances, and many, many more. So you can kind of focus more on 
the problem you're trying to solve rather than the individual app you should install. I found in the past, if you need some of these types of apps, you can end up spending money on multiple subscriptions for different pieces of software and costs can quickly rack up. With Setup, it's just one subscription, $9.99 a month, and you get all of these apps available for that. If you personally just use free apps, then this might not be for you, but if you are someone who does spend money on these kind of apps, then this is definitely something to consider because it could save you a packet in the long run. And the beauty of it, there is a seven day free trial, so you've got nothing to lose. If you like the look of Setup, I will leave the download link in the video description below, so you can go and check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think of the leaked MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch models. Are you excited for them? Do you prefer the smaller variants or do you prefer a different laptop, etc. altogether? Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it and want to see a potential review as and when they do drop. I do tech videos pretty much daily here on... I don't do... I try, I try to, but I, I definitely don't do them daily. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.